Hi and welcome back to a new video. We recently compared the, at least according to Geizhals, most popular AIOs in Germany. And now on my desk I have something that's probably not the most popular, but historically maybe one of the most relevant AIOs in the history of PC cooling. This was sent to us by Ground, who is an active HWBot member. Thank you very much for your help and support, so we can take a look at this in detail in today's video. If you try to find out which was the first AIO ever made for the PC market, the information is not so clear. Acetec at least claims that historically they made the first AIO, but then they're also claiming that it's the water chill, which from my opinion is not really correct because the water chill seems to be some kind of like custom water cooling kit. So it included a pump, tubing, water block, like radiator, and you had to like connect everything yourself. Whereas, at least in my opinion, this is something I would call an AIO. So everything is one piece, you don't have to assemble everything yourself. And just from the information I could find online, the first real AIO made by Acetec was from 2006. And that's what you can see in this image. This should be a 775 mainboard. And at least in this image, you can see that's the first time that, at least from my knowledge, that the pump was integrated into the pump housing together with the cold plate directly cooling the CPU. So that's at least a first. It's also cooling an 8800 GTX from what I can see. But prior to that, because this is from 2004, I'm not quite sure if Acetec was the first to design an AIO or if they were the first to put the pump on top of the CPU block. So I think that's a bit more correct because that's from 2004. And that's from Sanjo Denki, Sanjo Denki. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. It should be a Japanese brand. And I found a document online stating that this is from 2004. And already that a document is from 2004 is great. And it could also be that they sold it maybe prior to that. But getting information on that is quite difficult. When I first looked at this, it straight reminded me of like any cooler you have sitting inside your car. At least not an EV, but a normal conventional car. This looks exactly like a miniature version of what you have sitting in front. Also, if we just turn it around, the radiator could also be from a bike, like from a motorbike, at least size-wise, it's getting pretty much in the same direction. Also from the mounting mechanism, I'm not quite sure how they thought this would fit inside a PC. Maybe there was a special case back then or like a server where they wanted to use it for, but like any standard case would definitely not allow to mount this. So that's actually quite interesting. And like right next to the fan, we have the tiny pump, everything with normal, those 12 volt DC connectors. And here we can also see again that it was made from Sanjo Denki, I guess, or like Sanjo Denki, Sun Ace MC. Liquid cooling system. Here we have the cooling block, which should be made out of nickel plated copper. Just judging by the weight, it's definitely not aluminum. And in one of the documentation, they also stated that they were testing from conventional aluminum air coolers and they tried to improve them with better materials and the only like real choice better material choice is copper if you go from aluminium as a base so that should be quite clear. Those tubing you could recognize if you know the first generations of AIO let's say an NZXT Kraken first version they all had this type of tubing. It was not really like nice to use because it's pretty stiff but then on the other hand it's also very good for like not having a lot of diffusion of your liquid leaving the, the tubing. So that could definitely be one of the reasons why there is still plenty of liquid inside. Obviously, we want to find out, first of all, if it still works. And if it still works, how well will it perform? And we want to compare the data to our previous testing. I know it will be kind of unfair to compare it to the 360 AIO results, but then again, we will know how to compare it to the previous testing. So that should be quite interesting. I already prepared a mounting bracket for socket 1700, so we can mount it on the 12900 KS. I don't think it's coincidence that the mounting base is shaped this way, so it's not square, which is something we had on quite old CPUs but it's more like a rectangle shape, like socket 1700. That should definitely be quite interesting. Sheik is here to assist with assembly. So yeah, Sheik, thank you for the standoff. That's exactly what we will need because we want to use it with this backplate, which is pretty much what we saw already in the previous video, mounting wise, like a standard part. And I want to combine it with this acrylic piece I made. 
And that's how it looks like with the acrylic frame installed. Then put this additional acrylic piece on top to secure the block, have some mounting pressure, and I think it doesn't even look bad. So the fan is definitely spinning. Makes a quite annoying noise, even though the airflow is not that high. And I could hear that something is going on with the pump, so I could hear some sort of like pump noise, but I'm not sure if there is some mandatory orientation, because in this way, like, I don't know. I don't know where the air goes, I don't know if this will take air in this way, but I just thought if the pump is sitting on the bottom, then should help to not breathe in air. Just going for BIOS temps, this looks great. With 34 degrees Celsius, definitely pump will be working, otherwise this would be much higher. We can even get some readings of the fan speed and also of the pump speed. I attached the fan to the CPU fan speed and that's running at like 1300 RPM. But I have to admit that's a quite annoying noise for this type of RPM. So that's, it's not that high RPM, but I think the bearing might not be in the best shape. And the water pump, 2000 RPM. We will just go ahead and straight test R20 with exactly the same settings we used for the previous AIO test. Okay, that is much better than expected. It's going to hit 100 degrees Celsius on this hottest core for sure, because we even saw that on the 360 AIOs, but I mean, that's like 220 watt continuous load in R20. It is throttling to some regard right now but still that that is so much better than expected it's almost 10,500 points so that is pretty much stock performance okay that is a surprise i expected this to immediately hit like 100 degree all over the course not even bad last time we did prime 95 comparison so that meant we were pumping 260 watt through the aios and i did a warm-up phase of about 10 minutes but already after not even three minutes, as you can see here, it dropped down to like 170 watt because we're just hitting the radiator surface limit. That was kind of expected. So I think we'll just switch over to the gaming test. The temperatures while gaming are definitely higher than with the previously tested 360 AAOs, but they are still in a region which is perfectly fine, like more than perfectly fine. You can see the P cores typically sitting between like 50 and 55 degrees Celsius, not really hitting the 60 degrees Celsius mark, even though all of the P cores are running at 5 GHz. I think that is quite impressive for the fan size we can see and also that it's 18 years old. I guess it's about 8 to 10 degrees warmer in general than the 360 AIOs, but that looks pretty nice. By the way, this was also noise normalized to 40 dBA, to be fair with the other AIOs. And even though the fan is a bit more quiet, I can still hear the bearing and it's making a noise that it's definitely not enjoyable. If we now check out the results, you will see the Sun ASMC right on bottom, which was expected, but with 50.5 degrees Celsius. And that is only about 6 degrees Celsius worse than a 360 AIO. And that is actually surprising. And as I expected, it's about 8 to 10 degrees Celsius worse than all the other 360 AIOs. And if we consider that this is like 18 years old and the surface area is much smaller than a 360 AIO, I think that is quite impressive. And then I was reading again through this document which I was talking about earlier and I'm quite impressed how open, how transparent they were talking about this development. They showed exact dimensions of all parts, they had cut through views um, from the radiator pump combination, they explained how exactly the pump was built, how they chose which component, why they went for copper and that they went for chemical nickel plating, which is a lot thinner than the electroplating. So very interesting details. And they also detailed that this should be a fin cooler, like a fin cooler, which I think is quite interesting considering that this was tech from 2004. I cannot remember that the rest, I'm not even sure if EK made blocks back then, but I'm not even sure if the rest made fint coolers or if they still had their like weird shapes, internals and everything. So that could really be very interesting to cut open. I didn't really want to do it because it's in the end not my thing, but then I found a second one, like a backup unit on eBay, which I just ordered. And I think having a new one from eBay is fine to give it back to ground and we can utilize this for the sake of YouTube. Before we cut open the cold plate part, obviously we first have to get rid of the fluid, cut open the tubing. And just going back to the documentation of this thing, I found out that it is using a 50-50 mix of glycol and also water, which is quite interesting. Consider that alcohol 
will decrease your performance because it has a much lower heat capacity than water but at the same time it will work against corrosion and that's probably why this should still work absolutely fine with the 50-50 mix even after like 18 years. Hmm. Sorry if there's any kind of background noise because we're still milling parts next to us but just the way it's made it looks like it's some stamped part at least we have one part that is surrounding everything else like a sheet metal thing and then like in between I'm not sure if you can see it but there are like a ton of like tiny it looks like scratches like lines in there so I'm not quite sure if it's just squeezed or like pressed together copper fins we will find out It's very interesting, so if I just look through the cut, I can already see some fins. It seems to be quite difficult to open. I think you can already see it a little bit, but it seems to be probably soldered, I'm not quite sure, but very difficult to open. I will just add one more cut on top. I am pretty sure that they took individual copper sheets and then aligned them to each other and soldered them together and after that milled over it to get the surface. Should be a bit better to see here. So you can see all those individual sheets and some silver stuff in between. So that should be some kind of tin from the soldering process, I assume. And here we have all the fins that were used for dissipating the heat. In general, the, like the base is quite thick. It looks like five millimeter thickness, which is a lot more than what you would typically use nowadays. It could help to get some spikes out from the CPUs, like some sudden heat spikes, but for overall peak performance, a much thinner base is typically better. Just from how it worked is that you had this chamber on the back, so the water would enter right here, go through the fins, over here, back to the other side, and exit on this tube. But generally speaking, I think for an 18 year old cooler with the design, that is quite impressive. To recap things, if we now look at that ASTEC is claiming we invented the sealed loop liquid cooler. I'm not quite sure if that is correct. And if it's right to claim this publicly to say that they invented the sealed loop liquid cooler. Because the water chill kit for sure is not a sealed loop liquid cooler. That was just an ordinary custom water cooling kit. And custom water cooling has been out there before Acetech. Acetech did not invent the water cooling in PCs. That is absolutely clear. And we know, because there are documents out there that show that this is from 2004, it is pretty clear that this is from 2004. Whereas if you try to research anything from Acetech from like 2004, 2005, there is no closed loop liquid cooler from Acetech from that region. Around end of 2005, maybe 2006, they had some sealed loop liquid coolers where they also put the pump into the cooling block and they absolutely deserve a patent for having the pump sitting in the block. It's absolutely no problem with that. But I'm quite certain or at least, correct me if I'm wrong, that they did not invent the sealed loop liquid cooler. They should not claim this publicly because that's absolutely not correct. Performance wise, this was quite impressive. This was pretty cool. So Ground, thank you very much for sending this to us. Anyway, the Acetech patent will end in 2025 and there is no way to extend this further. I think that will be very good for our industry and then we will figure out what will happen. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.